Hello, and welcome to the virtual waterfront walking tour. My name is Rachel Easton with Harbor Wild Watch, and together with the Harbor History Museum and the Downtown Waterfront Alliance, we have partnered to bring you these waterfront walking tours for the past six years. Due to our current situation, this year's tours will be brought to you virtually via Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in to learn more about the different stops from two of our popular tours, Skiffs to Spirits and The Wonders of the Waterfront. Today, I will be your guide for a segment of The Wonders of the Waterfront tour. I'm particularly fond of this tour because it explores the incredible wildlife and natural resources of Gig Harbor's past and present. Even though I'm super passionate about Gig Harbor and I've lived here a long time, please remember that I'm not a historian and it's simply not possible to cover everything about Gig Harbor on each stop. But if you'd like to share your stories or drop some of your knowledge into the comment section, we'd be happy to read those after the fact. We'll also do our best to answer any questions that you might have. Today we're going to talk about Ansich Waterfront Park. But before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to recognize that we are on the traditional lands of the Puyallup Nation and other speakers of the Southern Lushootseed language since time immemorial. The name for the Puyallup people in Lushootseed is Spoyalapach, and it means generous and welcoming to all people. We acknowledge these people as the keepers of the land and pay our respects to them. Let's begin. Welcome to one of the newer parks in Gig Harbor. Ansich Waterfront Park is an excellent example of how Gig Harbor is preserving its cultural heritage. These waters led to a booming commercial fishing industry beginning in the late 1800s. Immigrants from Scandinavia and Croatia brought their families here and made a living harvesting salmon, squid, shrimp, herring, anchovies, pollock, cod, and crab. Each species had its own season and many fishermen back then were employed year-round. This property in particular is rooted in commercial fishing history. It is comprised of two properties, the Ansitz family on the left and the Jerkovich markovich family on the right. You can see three historic structures from where we're standing. The Martin Ansitz family house, the Ansitz Terabochia netshed, and the Ansitz brothers netshed. Croatian immigrants Peter and Katie Ansitz purchased this property from John Novak and built their overwater netshed in the 1920s. The original dock burned in a fire in the late 20s and was not rebuilt until the 1950s. A large 16 foot by 16 foot bait tank off of a tuna clipper was once located just above the net shed and used for tarring nets. Tar from Pacific Tar in Tacoma was brought in 50 gallon barrels, heated over a wood fire, and the nets were dipped into the tar to help preserve them. The tank was removed in the early 1960s after nylon replaced cotton web in the nets. The restoration work on this site focused on the net shed because of the significant role it played in the local commercial fishing industry. Net sheds began appearing along the Gig Harbor waterfront around 1910, and there are 17 that still stand today. Most of them have been repurposed as restaurants, meeting spaces, and even man caves, but five are still used here in the working waterfront for their original purpose of storing and mending nets during the off season. The other side of the property is a perfect example of just that. It is still used by the Jerkovich family and their commercial fishing business today. An easement onto the park allows them access to their floats and commercial fishing vessels. Because of this rich history, the city of Gig Harbor completed restoration of this property in March of 2019. There are two main structures in the park, a 1,068 square foot restored net shed and the 2,700 square foot building for public and private kayak storage. The site also includes public water access, picnic tables, and ADA accessible bathrooms. The building itself was constructed so the view of the harbor from the street would not be obscured. The rooftop features bricks honoring the fishing families which helped to shape Gig Harbor into what we see today. Eventually, the public will also watch fishermen mend their nets and prepare other fishing gear in the net shed to get a sense of what fishing like was like at the turn of the century. In the near future, this site will also be the new home to the six-time national champion Gig Harbor Canoe and Kayak Racing Team. Numerous young Gig Harbor athletes have gone on to represent the United States at the Junior World Championships throughout Europe and the Americas. The team will move to this location once a dock extension is built to launch their kayaks. This park also features a number of ecologically sustainable designs. The pavement we're standing on is permeable, which means that it allows water to infiltrate the ground, 
rather than running off directly into Gig Harbor Bay. So why is this important? Permeable pavement is a best management practice used to reduce the impacts of stormwater pollution and improve water quality. Stormwater is water from rain or melting snow that doesn't soak into the ground. It flows primarily from rooftops, paved areas, bare soil, and sloped lawns. As it flows, stormwater runoff collects and transports animal waste, litter, salt, pesticides, fertilizers, oils, grease, brake dust, soil, and other potential pollutants. About 75% of the pollution in the Salish Sea comes from stormwater. Permeable pavement and other best management practices can help reduce this impact. For example, the construction of the new dock includes grates, which allow light to penetrate through the water. This is critical for migrating fish. Have you ever been outside on a sunny day and then walked indoors? It takes a moment for your eyes to adjust. The same thing happens to fish, and predators can use this to their unfair advantage. This feature also ensures that eelgrass, a native plant to the Salish Sea, has enough light for photosynthesis. And the plants used in the landscaping here are drought tolerant and able to withstand full sun and dry periods. This will ensure that no extra water is wasted. Remember, all the water that is currently on our planet is all that there will ever be. And while we think of the Pacific Northwest as having plenty of water, we're seeing more and more years of drought with the impacts of climate change. We can look to the increases in wildfires as a sign of this change. Speaking of plants, do you know the difference between a non-native and invasive species? Non-natives are any plant or animal that did not originate in this area, typically introduced with human help. Non-native species only become invasive if they displace one or more of our native species. And in many cases, invasive species are able to spread rapidly because they have few natural predators in their new environment. All around Gig Harbor, there are signs of invasive species. Himalayan blackberry, English ivy, scotch broom, and knotweed, just to name a few. Each year, invasive species cost Washington State approximately $1.3 billion. Nationally, about $120 billion is spent on invasive species management each year. The top offenders in Washington are scotch broom, which presents timber regeneration and livestock foraging, smooth cord grass, which infiltrates estuaries and destroys native species needed for fish and waterfowl, apple maggots, which affect apple, pear, plum, and cherry crops, and quagga zebra mussels, which have not yet been established here, but can be absolutely devastating to all freshwater in the state. That's it for our tour today. Thank you so much for joining us on our exploration of Ansich Waterfront Park. Be sure to tell your family, friends, and anyone thinking of visiting Gig Harbor to watch these videos and learn a little bit more about our beautiful waterfront and how we are all, past and present, tied to the water. Thank you.